Hey guys, my name is Casey Ferris. I make DaVinci Resolve tutorials here on YouTube. Today we are talking about 3D text. Going over the basics about how to actually make it in Fusion and put it into your projects and things like that. So let's go. I've made a new Fusion composition just by going up to my media pool, right clicking anywhere and selecting new Fusion composition. Before we get into things, I'm gonna set up my comp. I'm just gonna drag a background node down to my nodes and connect it to my media out. That's gonna give us a black screen. The reason I do this is just to make sure to set the composition size, make sure everything acts the way it should. So let's make some 3D text. Here in my tools, I'm gonna to grab text 3D and drag it down to my nodes and I'll make sure it's selected and up in the inspector, I'll type something. Let's type dimension, yeah. Now, if we select this node and hit two on our keyboard, that's gonna bring this up here in our 3D viewer. To move around in 3D, you can hold down Alt and middle click, and that'll rotate. You can just middle click to kind of pan around, and you can hold down Control and scroll wheel to move in and out. One thing you might notice is that this 3D text has no 3D-ness, it's flat, so flat. The reason for that is because it hasn't been extruded. So again, with our text 3D selected over in our inspector, I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom under extrusion. And this little slider extrusion depth, I'm just gonna pump that up and look what's happening now. Ooh, we getting, we getting 3D, look at that. It's got some girth. Of course, it still looks super weird. And that's because we don't have any lighting. We don't have any lights and we also don't have lighting even enabled. So at this point you might be looking all through the inspector looking for lighting and things like that and it just isn't working. Why don't they have stuff? The reason is because to make 3D things we actually have to add a couple different nodes. If you think about something that exists in three dimensions like a real coffee cup, there's a couple different parts to it actually existing. The first one is that there's an object, right? So the coffee cup. There's also the world it exists in, right? So it's in this room and it lives in the world with lights. And right now you can see it because we're taking a picture of it. Mm -hmm. So there's really four elements to making something look good in 3D. There's the actual object, the world, the lights, and actually capturing the image. So it works the same way in Fusion. Right now we have text 3D, but that's just the thing. That's just the object. That's like just our coffee cup, right? We also need a world for it to exist in. That happens in a node called Merge 3D, which is right here. I'll grab that and drag that down. And I can connect this to our world, right? And if I hit two on the keyboard, we can see it doesn't really look a whole lot different, but this Merge 3D, this is where we add different things to our world, right? To our scene. So we can add lights, we can add other objects, we can add all kinds of stuff right here with Merge 3D. And we'll get into that in a second, but now we actually need to capture this image, right? So this is the thing, this is the world. Now we need a way to actually look at this. You may notice that if you grab the output of Merge 3D and try and drag it on something, it doesn't really connect to anything. That's because these are 3D nodes and these are 2D nodes. And eventually, if you're going to actually want to see anything 3D, you're gonna to have to convert your 3D node to a 2D node. The equivalent, you know, of capturing a real world image, you know? Anyway. So you would surely think that that would be a camera 3D node, right? Well, sort of. What we actually need is renderer 3D. We'll drag that down. And I'll connect my merge 3D to renderer 3D. And this is actually rendering the image. So now if we hit two on the keyboard, we'll see things are actually looking a little bit different. So this is just basically a picture of all the 3D stuff that's happening. Now that we have these nodes set up, we have a lot more options for how things look. In Renderer 3D, in our inspector, towards the bottom, there's a little section called Lighting, and we can enable lighting and enable shadows. And now we'll see things are dark because we've enabled lighting, and guess what? There's no lights. So remember we have our object connected to our world, which is our Merge 3D, and we're taking a picture of it with Renderer 3D we're gonna add a light to our world. The way that we do that is just add a 3D light node. I'm gonna hit shift spacebar to bring up our select tool menu and I'm gonna type light. And that's gonna bring up all the different kinds of lights that I can use. The easiest one in my opinion is directional light. I'll click on that and add. And here we have our directional light node, which we can add to our merge 3D node. Now the merge 3D node is a lot like a merge node, like a 2D merge node, 
except for you can add any number of things. It's not limited to a foreground and a background because it's 3D, you can just add a bunch of stuff to the world. So here's the directional light and our text 3D. They're both being put into the same world and then we're rendering them. So now up here on our screen, this is starting to look a little bit 3D, right? How do we adjust this to make it look decent? Well, just like in the real world, if you wanna move some stuff around, you actually move the objects, right? So down here in our nodes, I can grab an object to move it. And actually to make this a little bit easier, I'll grab merge 3D one and hit one on the keyboard. And that'll bring up in our left viewer, kind of a view of our world. I can hold down control and scroll, hold down alt and middle drag to kind of see our 3D scene. I can also move objects inside of Merge 3D if I want to. I just have to select whatever I want to move down here in the nodes. And then in the Merge 3D, I can grab its little handle and move it around. This is where having two viewers in Fusion is super helpful. I like to have my Renderer 3D in the right viewer and my Merge 3D in the left viewer. So I can just push this text back and frame it up here in my right viewer. Just make sure that looks nice. And again, just like video production and everything, lighting in 3D is super important. So depending on the direction of the light, that's going to determine like how 3D something looks. So if I grab my directional light node, I can move it around here in my left viewer by grabbing its little widget. And a directional light doesn't really matter like where it is in the world, just because it shoots a light in a certain direction. But for organization, I like to have a light pretty much where I would think it would be. So if I have my key light, my main light, I'd have it, you know, here. And then I can rotate it to point towards my subject. A couple ways I can do that. I could do it in my inspector. Over here, my second icon in my directional light. I can adjust my rotation with sliders here. Moves things around. I can also see it changing that lighting there in the right hand viewer. That's a nice way to do things. You can also change your little widget thing up here in the upper left hand corner of our viewer You can switch to rotate mode and I can rotate it that way. They both control the same thing. Just depends on what you prefer. Now I have my 3d text with some decent lighting. And now that I have my renderer 3d, I can actually merge this over my background, whatever, whatever I want, just like a 2d image. And if I hit number two on the keyboard, there we have our text. There are a ton of things to get into with 3d and fusion. If you guys want to learn more about it, please let me know in the comments. But that's how you would get some really basic 3D text. Really, any time that you make something 3D, you're going to want probably three nodes. Whatever your object is, your merge 3D, and your render. Most of the time, you'll want to enable lighting and maybe shadows in your render. Then you can have your object with whatever lighting you put on it. So I hope that's helpful and inspiring. If you're still kind of confused with the basics of nodes, this video is the bomb for that. Huh, it is. It's great. I'm from the 90s, that's why I said the bomb. I, it's probably before that, actually. I don't know. Mm. Some of you experienced friends are probably going to tell me when the bomb started. Probably.